Right, we've just done a bit there with Sky Sports for the uh, upcoming giant transfer window, so I thought we'd grab Keith. I'll do ask the question this time, mate. <laughs> Your favourite deadline day working for Sky Sports News? Yeah. Well, I mean, the one with Andy Carroll that just passed was was very good because obviously the the day was just taken up with when we arrived in the morning there was no hint that Andy Carroll was was arriving and mm. then as the day went on little bits of news came out and then obviously we were outside the ground there as he drove in um, to I think he'd had his medical already but just to sign the papers and we actually got into the uh, dressing room and did an interview with him I think with half an hour of the, the window ticking down so um, that was that was quite dramatic and it was quite enjoyable but for some certain reasons it was a little bit frustrating for me um, but I won't go into that but <laughs> um, actually the, the, probably the, the, the one that I've probably enjoyed the most was actually the, the one the previous January with when Slimani and uh, Dubravka I think arrived in the, the same day so they actually there was a match that night I think Newcastle were playing it might be in Burnley here in a league match we were up at the training ground so um, the players both came in through um, private jets <laughs> and ar- arrived like I think at five o'clock and six o'clock and then got whisked here and actually had their medicals at the ground and we were really ahead of the game that day in terms of getting the stories now probably the Andy Carroll one was a bigger story because it was a, a hero returning to the club but for me that day the way it happened um, and the fact they arrived and then he came here for the medicals and then the match was on and I was actually pitch side doing um, post-match after the game talking about the signings and they were getting announced I think one got announced at um, half nine and one got announced at ten like just like minutes before the or half an hour and then minutes before the window closed and I think Mitrovic was on his way out to Fulham at the time as well Mm -hmm. and I think he actually if I'm right in saying was travelling was signed for Fulham but he actually went to Belgium to sign for Anderlecht I think and then they pulled out the deal at the last minute he actually signed for Fulham while he was in Belgium so all this was happening and we were across all of it at the time so although the Andy Carroll one was probably a bigger one at the time for that was the most dramatic one I'd had in a long time the one with Dubravka and Slimani mm. so I actually probably enjoyed that more and it was punctuated by the match as well which kind of just added a little bit of drama the fact the players were having the medical while the, while the match was going on on the pitch kind of like Almiron last year wasn't he you know, when he when the news broke before the City game that huge win that yeah. he, he was on his way we broke the transfer record at the time yeah I mean yeah I mean that was probably the, the probably biggest deal um, I've sort of been involved in late in the window but the reason I'm saying the reason I'm, I'm picking the, the one the previous year was because the Almiron deal was pretty much done the day before yeah. so we actually got the pictures of him arriving by helicopter I don't know if you remember yeah, it was yeah. like a really freezing cold day and that was a brilliant day you beat Man City the night before I think the news broke maybe about two hours before the Man City game so off, that yeah, that 24 hours was, was, was amazing and really good to report on but once deadline day itself arrived the, his deal was pretty much done so it was almost just like it, it wasn't a surprise night, yeah. whereas Dubravka and Slimani both came really out of the blue so that was like when I went to my bed the night before that, I didn't think those two, I had no idea those two were going to happen. Whereas the night before the deadline day there, I knew Almiron, mm. I knew Almiron was going to happen. So it was kind of almost just like... And, and you've been speaking to Steve Bruce today, any hints that he was looking at players to bring in? Or do you think we could see that again, where maybe surprise packages come through the door later yeah. on? Well, I mean, Lee Charnley spoke yesterday, didn't he, to the Chronicle, um, and said that unless something really good comes forward... He, he, I, I, he, they won't be going out spending 30, 40, 50 million pound on players I think it's such a hard window to, to work <coughs> in and you could end up wasting money in it I do think they'll use their loans I think they've got a couple of loans to use um, I do think they're looking for another striker and I certainly think now with Alan St Maximum ruled mm. out for, for a month and probably it could be longer depending on how long it takes him to get back they'll probably be looking for a, a winger as well so the other issue but the issue they've got there is they've got their 25 man Premier League squad and to get two in, they're going to have to free up a couple. So you would need to say someone like Muto or, or Key or whatever would need to be taken out of the Premier League squad. And that's going to obviously could create you know a little bit of problems. We've so still I, got the likes of Jack Hall back in there as well. Yeah, Harvey's Ivy and yeah, stuff. Yeah, well, they'll go out. I mean, they'll, I'd imagine they'll, they go, they'll in the squad. They're not even in the 25, those two. I'd ima- I mean, they're spending a lot of money and wages on these guys. You'd like to think these guys will probably go out and loan. And then maybe they'll probably need to sell one or two or loan a couple others out to get to get guys yeah. in. So I can't see them spending huge money, no. I think, obviously, they've got a lot of points on the board as well, which means it's more unlikely that he's, he's going to spend. Um, listen, something might come up and, and they might do it, but I think looking at it, the way it is I think probably the low market would be what they would do and as I say probably a winger with St Maximum's injury and they, well we need, they need a striker I mean Andy Carroll he's done well but you, you know you don't know if he's going to pick up an, another injury or not Joe Linton struggling for form Dwight Gale may go out so they <coughs> definitely need at least one striker yeah. who do you think would be good enough as a striker like Newcastle there? <sighs> who, who? yeah realistically oh, 
God, I mean, it's. I mean, you're looking. I mean, the guy. <laughs> the guy I think Newcastle should sign is Morelos from Rangers yeah. in Scotland. He's unbelievable. He's um, he is ready made for the Premier League. They'd probably get him for about twenty million pounds. They can Newcastle can afford that. I've watched him a number of times this season. He's got his temperament pretty much sorted out. He could play up front on his own in that Newcastle formation easily. He can he can take three defenders out of the game. Just very similar to Rondon. He likes the contact. You know, he kind of like goes gets a battle with the defenders and I think he worked perfect in that formation I honestly think that is exactly who Newcastle should be going for whether Steve Bruce and the hierarchy rate him as much as that I don't know but the one thing I would say is I don't think Rangers will sell him in January they'd probably need to wait until the end of the season yeah. but having watched him a number of times I honestly think he's ready made for, for the Premier League Right, perfect thanks very much for your time Keith No worries Cheers, Cheers. See you, mate. Cheers.